Dear learners, I am Radha Verma, an MED scholar from St. Xavier's College of Education, Autonomous Patna. This video has been prepared under the kind guidance of our college professor, Dr. Vikram Jeet Singh. Today, we will be discussing a very important topic that is challenges faced by teacher educators in conducting an in-service teacher education programs and their possible solutions. So, what are we going to learn through this video? In this video, we will be discussing the different challenges faced by in-service teacher educators. Meanwhile, we will also be pondering upon various solutions that may help us in dealing with those challenges. So, let us begin. Before we move on to our main topic, we must know what in-service teacher education actually means. In-service teacher education refers to the professional development and training that teachers undergo after they have started working their profession. This type of education is also known as continuing education as it provides ongoing training and development of teachers who are already in the field. The purpose of an in-service teacher ed education program is to help teachers improve their knowledge, abilities and keep them up to date with their latest skills, trends, research and progress in the field. This type of education can take many different forms, including workshops, seminars, conferences, etc. For your better understanding, I have divided the challenges into two subgroups, namely external challenges, that is the challenges from the ends of the participants. First of all, let's, uh, let us have a uh, look at the some external challenges. First one, time constraints. As we all know, being a teacher is no child's play. Teachers are already equipped with numerous responsibilities they and they have to fulfill their professional commitments too. Thus, finding time to attend classes or participate in training programs can be quite challenging. Moreover, school authorities often do not allow teachers to participate to such programs by exempting them from their duties. Therefore, an in-service teacher education program should be planned in such a way that it allows for maximum participation. Ideally, it should be conducting, conducted during long breaks such as summer and winter holidays. Even if it is being conducted on regular days, it should offer flexibility in terms of running hours and should be ideal for the teachers. Now coming to the second point, that is existing uh, skills and knowledge of the teachers. In-service teacher education aims to enhance the existing skills and knowledge of the teachers, but sometimes teachers may not be open to accepting changes and are uh, inconsistent in their nature. They may resist changes, they may show a lack or unwillingness to change, leading to discomfort and hindrances in the path of in-service teacher education. This reluctance or intolerance can only be set aside by making them understand the relevance of the program and encouraging collaborative activities through which they may develop a positive attitude towards the program. The idea is to add more to their already existing skills and make their tasks easier. Remember, but not to question their effectiveness as a teacher. Point number three, lack of interest or motivation. Many times, teachers may participate but show little or no interest or enthusiasm due to a lack of motivation, leading to decreased engagement and limited professional growth. Therefore, to ensure motivation for the participants, there should be wider room for reinforcement and or cooperation, allowing for greater motivation. Point number four. Previous knowledge, sometimes teachers' prior knowledge acts as a constraint. For example, teachers who do not consider online learning effective may become uncomfortable or willing, not willing enough to participate in the online seminars or workshops. To involve them in the process and uh, ensure their participation, all their biases should be removed beforehand. Number five is individual differences. India being a diverse country exhibits a large number of people from different cultural, social, religious and racial backgrounds. This heterogeneity can also be observed in the participants aptitudes, attitudes, interests and temperaments. The teaching method appropriate for one in-service teacher or one in-service learner may not be applicable to another, just like regular class of classroom setups found in the schools. To ensure that multiple teaching and assessment methods should be implemented to cater to the needs and demands of the in-service teachers. Then we have limited access to technology. 
Many teachers living in remote areas have poor internet connectivity, which can prevent them from benefiting from in-service teacher programs conducted on online platforms. Similarly, digital immigrants may find it difficult to use technology to enhance their learning. Such learners can be provided with the required technical assistance so that they can use both online and offline platforms to get the latest information on teaching and learning practices. And lastly, we have burnout as the last external challenges that we have here. Sometimes teachers may not be able to bear the stress or job related pressure, which can lead to a loss of focus and make them see participation as an obligation or duty rather than a fruitful learning experience. Hence, efforts should be made to create a stress-free and joyful learning experience. Now we'll be talking about the external challenges. External challenges we have done. Sorry, now we'll be talking about the internal challenges. Point number one, lack of, lack of follow-up assessment. Although the programs are conducted effectively, there is no provision for proper monitoring and follow-up to assess whether the learning outcomes have been accomplished in real-life classroom situations or not. This develops an anything goes attitude within the teacher's fraternity. And they, may, they might not be too eager to apply their attitude within the teacher's fraternity. Uh, they might, uh, what we can say is that they might not be too eager to apply to their learning in their actual classroom teaching. At times, school authorities do not uh, coordinate well, resulting in the development of a regressive or lethargic attitude among the teachers. Therefore, follow-up progress should be conducted on a mandatory basis to ensure that the teachings of in-service training programs are thoroughly made a part of the actual classroom context. Now coming to the point number two, that is ineffectiveness of a resource person or an in-service teacher educator. This becomes a major challenge as people will only attend or listen to someone if they actually find that they are gaining something out of it. The in-service teacher educator has to be an ideal, possessing not only greater skills and knowledge, but also a sound and effective personality. It has to be made sure that one size fits all approach is discouraged. Some teachers are fit for workshops, while others may be better for seminars and training sessions. An in-service teacher educator who has the potential to attract a wider audience going to their flamboyance in a certain topic may not hold a similar grip on some other topic. We all are humans, isn't it? Thus, while choosing the resource person and ex uh, experts, their specializations and other qualities should be duly regarded. Now, coming to the third topic, which is security threats. Organizers of in-service teacher education programs often neglect security concerns when planning events. For example, hosting an event in an area prone to violence and terror attacks may, res may not result in a broad participation, right? Similarly, areas prone to natural disasters may face similar challenges. During the COVID-19 pandemic, in-person in-service teacher education programs were suspended due to health and security concerns. Therefore, ensuring security should be a top priority and when planning in-service teacher education programs have to be maximized. Number four is health and hygiene. As we all know, a healthy mind dwells in an in a healthy body. Therefore, arrangements uh, arrangements for participants in in-service teacher pro education program should comply with participants' health norms. Adequate facilities such as food and lodging should be provided. Basic amenities such as separate restrooms for male and female participants, mosquito repellents, and first aid services should be made available to encourage active and brisk participation in these training programs. Number five is Funding. In order to meet the pre-discussed needs of security, health, hygiene, food, accommodation, conveyance, technical assistance, and so on, uh, organizing body requires funds. These funds may come from the government or the organizing body itself. Sufficient funding must be allotted to maintain at least the minimum quality standards for these programs. Without proper funding, the program may suffer, regardless of how effectively it had been planned or how creative it could be. The program should not set uh, unrealistic goals or call for unnecessary expenses while regulating the basic quality standards. Additionally, the resources used should be both viable and cost effective. Now coming to the next point that is uh, communication barriers. In a multicultural setup, teachers in an in-service teacher education program 
may find it challenging to cater to the diverse needs of the participants. Apart from language barriers, uh, communication barriers like uh, related to the resource persons themselves play a crucial role in the success of in-service training program. If the service teacher is uh, confident in speech, uses appropriate vocabulary, and allows for timely feedback from the participants, the in-service program is more likely to be successful. It is also recommended that the in-service teacher education program is, what we can say is, uh, it should be situated in a quiet and noise-free environment to minimize distractions and allow participants to fully engage in the sessions. Now, point number seven is, no relevance, all right. Often the in-service teacher education programs are not designed according to the contextual needs and aspirations of the teachers. As a result, these programs may appear vague or irrelevant to the teachers. To avoid this, surveys should be conducted for the teachers, the school authorities, and other stakeholders to determine in which areas the in-service teacher need, teachers need actual assistance. This will ensure that the programs are not merely theoretical, but are of practical help. Now, difference in the state policies, which is our last point for the day. Different states in India have their own policies on education, including different start dates for the school session. Some states begin their session in the first week of April, uh, while others start only after summer breaks. Additionally, different states follow their own mm -hmm. curriculum best suited to the needs of their region. Therefore, in-service teacher education programs should be made flexible to cater to the diverse needs of different states and their respective curricula. Now, in conclusion, we can say, although there are maybe various constraints in the process of in-service teacher education, with careful planning and execution, we can resolve these issues and promote the best learning experience for the teachers. Ultimately, this will benefit the learners and contribute to the growth and development of the nation and society as a whole. Uh, lastly, I hope this video helped you to understand the challenges faced by teacher educators and how to deal with them. Thank you for watching.